Hi everybody and welcome to the Surface Interval in association with the Two Minute Foundation. So the bends is an old term for what we now call decompression illness, which includes decompression sickness and arterial air embolism. It got the name the bends when people suffering with DCI would walk around bent over to try and alleviate the pain in their backs. But put simply, decompression illness is where some gas expands out of solution where it shouldn't be in your body. The best way to avoid decompression illness is to dive according to your training and as conservative as possible. So don't ascend too quickly and don't push your limits. It's why most divers dive with a dive computer today. They are constantly working out how long you can stay down and when it's safe to ascend. But just because your dive computer says it's okay to ascend doesn't necessarily mean that it is. So let's take a look at some of the things that can actually increase your chances of getting the bends and how to avoid them. Patent foramen ovale is basically a hole inside of your heart that normally closes soon after birth for most people. The hole creates a bypass between the left and the right hand side of your heart so that blood can basically bypass your lungs that remove the dissolved gases that have been collecting during the dive so you're not actually breathing those dissolved gases out as efficiently as possible and that kind of old blood is now recirculating around your body. With more of these gases collecting in higher concentrations inside of your body, the higher the chances that they will come out of solution and form little bubbles that can block blood flow and just cause havoc. Because very little was actually known about how much a PFO can affect a diver's decompression, most patients were basically just instructed to just dive conservatively. Uh, but a recent study suggests that simply diving conservatively isn't sufficient. The study actually showed that divers who had been diagnosed with a PFO who were instructed to dive conservatively and had done so still showed signs of decompression illness far beyond divers with a similar PFO that had actually been surgically repaired. If you do suffer from a PFO, discuss it with your doctor and the increased risks of decompression illness, or better yet, discuss it with Dan. The whole basis of decompression is where you exist and then travel from a higher ambient pressure to a lower ambient pressure. Gases dissolved in your body expand out of solution. While scuba diving, that can happen quite quickly. The change in pressure increases by one bar every 10 meters you descend underwater. If it were the same on dry land, you'd have to stop halfway up a large staircase to go upstairs and elevators would have mandatory pauses when going up skyscrapers. But the pressure does continue to drop as you continue up to higher altitudes on the surface. So after a dive, it's best to stay at sea level. The one you're taught most about is aeroplanes. The cabin pressure on an aeroplane is kept at around 0.8 bar or atmospheres on a commercial flight, which is just a little bit lower than sea level. So if you go in an aeroplane or climb up a mountain where the air pressure drops, you still have those dissolved gases in your tissues that you want to come out of solution after a dive, they're still inside of your body. So you do still maintain some of that extra gas inside some of your tissues after leaving the water. So after scuba diving, try to stick at sea level for as long as possible. The current guidelines are at least 12 hours after a single non-decompression dive, 18 hours for multi-dives. So if you dive more than once on a single day or over multiple days, and 24 hours after a dive that requires a decompression stop. If you can leave it longer, it's just even better. After a cold dive, it's very tempting to rush to a radiator, but that can actually make things worse. By warming up your extremities, it actually increases the rate of chemical reactions and things in that specific area, and more importantly, how quickly the gases are dissolved or come out of solution. So by warming up one part of your body, you're actually increasing the risk of decompression illness in that area. 
After a cold dive, warm up slowly. Wrap yourself up and let your body warm itself up. Try not to use external heaters if you can avoid it. Your body is very good at warming itself up at an appropriate rate. So all you need to do is just insulate yourself from losing any further heat. Put a hat on and get yourself dry. The same goes when you're actually in the water. Studies into body temperature changes at different parts of the dive show that your chances of decompression illness have a strong correlation to your body temperature. When your body is warm, it absorbs gas at a faster rate and it gets rid of gas at a faster rate. The worst combination is a diver being warm at the start of the dive and the deepest part of the dive when they're absorbing the most gases, but then the diver changes to becoming cold as they start to ascend because they're not getting rid of all of that dissolved gas at the faster rate. But their dive computer doesn't know that. It's just running off an algorithm. Try to keep your body temperature as stable as possible throughout the entire dive and if possible, warm all the way through if you can. If you do have a cold dive where you suddenly get cold halfway through the dive or you have to exert yourself a lot by fighting a current, try and ascend a bit slower than normal and slower than your computer says towards the end of the dive, just to give your body a little bit of extra time to get rid of any excess gas at a sensible rate before just coming straight up to the surface. Everybody everywhere is telling you that you should be drinking more water and I'm just going to add to that list. You should be drinking more water. Drinking more water is good for your health and it's actually good for your decompression also. Studies have shown that being dehydrated can actually increase your chances of decompression illness and we should all be proud to admit that we actually pee in our wetsuits because it means that we've been drinking plenty of water, sort of. But scuba diving ticks a lot of boxes for getting yourself dehydrated. We often go to hot climates, so you're sweating, uh, immersion diuresis, which is why you feel that sort of urge to pee when you're diving. It's not just you, it's actually a physiological thing. Uh, salt water and just exposure to the elements, all of these things can accelerate your rate of dehydration. When you are dehydrated, your blood is a little bit thicker and blood flow is actually reduced, which when you're trying to scrub something out of it is a bad thing. Drink more water than usual. Nothing fancy, just good old fashioned water. And think about things that can dehydrate you. The air that we breathe itself is very dry because it's filtered out before we pump it into the tanks. But every time we breathe out, we're breathing out a little moisture from our body. So literally scuba diving, we're breathing out more water than we're often consuming. Consuming diuretics like caffeine, alcohol, and even some medications, they need to be accounted and balanced for. Sure, you're drinking like a cup of coffee or something, but things can actually be absorbing more water from your body than you're actually gaining. So try and avoid diuretics. Don't skip medications that you require or anything, but try to drink a bit more water to compensate for any diuretic effect it might have. Other factors that can affect your chances of decompression illness are fatigue. Uh, if you're already tired or kind of worn out from the day, when you start the dive, then your body's already working on sort of fixing that illness or whatever it was, and now it has to work on the decompression also. Or if it's burnt a lot of calories already before the dive, it's kind of reserve fuel stocks are already kind of low, so now it has to work even harder. If you're feeling run down after a sickness or you haven't had a decent meal in a while, then try not to go on any strenuous dives. It's simply not worth it. Just give your body the, ch the best chance of being on top form at the start of the dive. Obesity and older age can also increase your chances of decompression illness. There's not a great deal that you can do about reducing your age that I'm aware of, but if you are becoming an older diver, then do consider taking a bit easier and talking to your doctor or more specifically a dive doctor to make sure that you're diving safely and you don't need to adjust your diving accordingly. Previous history of decompression illness is another risk factor. If you have had some kind of decompression illness before, your chances of getting it again actually increase. If you've been diagnosed of some kind of decompression illness before, discuss it with a dive doctor before getting back into the water. 
So the important things are to just take your health really seriously and don't just believe whatever your dive computer is telling you. There's a certain amount of responsibility that you need to take to decide if you should take it a little bit easier on a dive rather than just go right up to the limits and then kind of skirt that edge and then ascend as soon as your dive computer says so. You kind of have to say in the back of your mind, maybe I should be a little bit more conservative, take my time and come up a bit more conservative. If you're ever in doubt about anything to do with your personal health and scuba diving, then have a good discussion with a dive doctor. Most GPs or family doctors might not be completely up to speed with the specific effects of scuba diving just on a, on a random whim to go travel and, uh, and see them. So a scuba diving specialist is usually a bit better and it is actually worth consulting Dan, the Divers Alert Network. They do some amazing things at the real cutting edge of scuba diving medicine. Don't forget to check out our merch store by clicking on the banner underneath this video and using the offer code SURFACE15 at checkout for a little thank you. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.